Salesforce says, bring your own model. And so let me talk about this a little bit. You know, what we've really had here is a bit of uh, what I would call as a ping pong yeah. of generative AI announcements. You know, uh, Microsoft makes one, Salesforce makes one. Microsoft makes one, Salesforce SAP makes one. Microsoft, make, and by the way, I, I keep saying Microsoft because they by far are making the most. Now, that's a byproduct of a couple of things. They've got the broadest portfolio. They're putting open AI and stacking GPT on everything. But at the same time, right now, there is a definite aggressive uh, market texture to be that, hey, we're the company building AI into everything. But Salesforce is the SaaS leader in CRM. And that's been, def- been the case for a long time. Uh, the two companies have had a little bit of a debate on who's going to put who put AI first into their CRM? <laughs> I'll let, uh, right. I won't, I won't try to make that call because uh, they'll both tell me I'm wrong. So I'd rather just play on the safe side on that one. But Dan, uh, you play you play safe a lot. I don't play safe that much. Go read my you, market. You broad down. Read my market I'd love to column. see you take more shots. You know, but are you, you are younger you than me. Lecturing me on air. I mean, you've already lectured me in the comments. <laughs> are you going to lecture me on air? Is that what you're doing? We're not no, buddy, we're besties. No lecture. We're not going to do here. that here. But no, I, I look. I can I can make the argument for both sides. That's why I'm yeah. good at this. Um, but you know, here's the thing: multi LLM or single LLM, or better yet, multi model or single model. I think we all know where this is going to end up. And I think one of the most interesting things and going to be the most interesting debates at the end of this sort of competitive uh, story is going to be. Did it make sense to kind of go all in and build your own LLM? Was there enough value in it? Or is the real money in the ability to daisy chain, stack, and utilize a lot of different models in a very simplistic way? So Salesforce is saying, yeah, we partnered with OpenAI. We partnered with, uh, with you know, to have chat GPT capabilities. But we are going to build our data cloud in a very open, bring your own model capacity. So Einstein Studio effectively is going to enable, you know, people to work across the ecosystem, SageMaker, AWS Vertex, um, and others, Cohere, uh, Anthropic, uh, different models. And the idea is, is, you know, you're going to be able to use the studio, um, not requiring an ETL. Uh, You can deploy quickly. You can generate higher numbers of predictions. Um, And of course, they're saying if you can do these two things as a business, you'll be able to increase your revenue and bring down the churn in your business. Um, This is a pretty pivotal, seminal moment for Salesforce. The company had launched its big GPT moment uh, a couple of months back in New York City. They came out with pricing. They basically built this data cloud. They're letting customers have quite a bit of governance in how the LLM and training is used. I think, frankly, you know, Pat, if you remember six or seven years ago, Bark Benioff kind of pitched the Einstein concept. Yeah. And this is kind of how it went. It just landed like that and whatever that is. But sometimes, you know, it's like Jensen, you know, he was wrong about enterprise AI until he wasn't, you know, (laughs) so. Yeah. And I think a little bit of what was here was the sophistication of AI, the models, training, because it was really in the beginning, it was more advanced analytics and ML was really what he was touting. But now with generative tools, with where we're at with uh, AI semis, with where we're at with software and cost management, the ability to implement AI into your business applications is, is very real. And so the, the claim to be stuck is that they had this vision six or seven years ago, and now we're seeing it come to reality. I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty excited about the idea of an open uh, approach to bring your own model. You know, a lot of people have been down on 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 anyone that's not sort of Google or Microsoft because they didn't kind of go all in and build it themselves. Those companies are going to be very successful in AI. But I think in the end, kind of like a hybrid cloud, you know, AWS didn't say hybrid cloud for a long time. And then now they say hybrid and then multi. It kind of it kind of happened over a period of time. I think that's kind of what's going to happen here with AI. I think we've seen AI kind of be very monolithic in the models to like, oh my gosh, we're going to need small models. We're going to need foundational models. We're going to need large models. We're going to need micro models. We're going to have different models for different things. And they're all going to be required to really truly benefit from AI. So in the opposite moment, that's why a bedrock can work. And that's why a Salesforce uh, bring your own model can work. And we're going to kind of see this ebb and flow between many models, single models, 
And in the large language is even, is one model enough or do each bring something of value here? And then of course, it's how you deploy it, how you make it easy, how you train. I like what they're doing here, Pat. I think it's interesting. I think competition brings innovation. You and I talk about this all the time. My Forbes piece says this. In the end, the more they innovate, the more they compete, the more we win. Okay, we got nine minutes, two and oh a half God. topics. So I'm... please stop talking. No, I'm just kidding. So um, uh, first off, it's hard to determine if Einstein using machine learning and deep learning was successful, okay? But any chatbot that came out six or seven years ago wasn't that good. It solved a few problems, but also created a few as well. Now, Salesforce did go from zero AI predictions per week to a trillion. So I think that is one metric that says it, it, it was successful. So a couple things I just wanted to hit that, that I don't think may have been covered uh, either holistically or appropriately out there. So first of all, uh, Deloitte's not just a partner. They're actually uh, a customer. So they're using uh, AWS SageMaker uh, to support uh, the Be Bring Your Own Model Einstein Studio. Now, the interesting part is I got to do some research on this. I still can't make the connection from SageMaker to Bedrock. In fact, I met with the a AWS folks last week and there is currently not a connection between those. But what I think in Einstein Studio is doing, they are making that connection between SageMaker and uh, Bedrock. The other thing that didn't get a lot of play as well is really the importance of the Salesforce uh, data cloud. I just hired a, a new VP and principal analyst, Robert Kramer, and I'm going to sick him on this. But uh, essentially, this gets back to you have to have, it's garbage in, garbage out, right? That's been true for 50 years. And you have to have the ability to take uh, real-time and proprietary data, train those, but also uh, toss out and basically tear up uh, the data that you don't want sitting around, that you don't want others to to look at. And, you know, I... I've been pretty hard on Salesforce the last couple of years, but I, I do have to give credit where credit is due. They did a really good job showing uh, in their AI day um, that I know you attended, I watched on video, was how uh, the Salesforce data cloud works and also the Einstein trust layer. Uh, I need to do a little bit more research on the trust layer, but uh, I'm hopeful that uh, Salesforce does not make themselves the arbiter of what's good speech and what is bad speech, they're letting their customers to, to be able to uh, determine that. Otherwise, they're putting themselves in a, an absolute no-win situation with the barbell of, of ideologies that we have out there right now.